Hello and uh, welcome back. Uh, today I have another frequency counter. It's from HP. It's the 5315B version and it goes up to 100 megahertz. Um, we're gonna test if it works. It had a bit of an accident during the shipping. Well, aside from the fact that it is super dirty and sticky, it, uh, it crashed during the shipping so this button is broken and you can see this is yeah it really hit the hit from the front like this bang so i hope it's still all good or we can just bend it back i don't know if you can see here i will zoom in later but it is all and it's sticky so uh, look if i do this and my fingers just get all brown so maybe it was a smoker or it's just very dirty but uh, we try uh, to get it better we can have a closer look at the front if you can see it is a sort of a brown glow and all the buttons you can see also have some residue and and the caps are missing right here and you can see this button completely crashed and if you look at the side panel here you can see it is bumped no so let's see if we can just bend it back and uh, we give it a thorough clean I with another package of an uh, HP counter I got two extra spare buttons so we're gonna use that on this one this was a very friendly seller and from the other counter and he just gave me two extras with caps so that is perfect to uh, replace this broken one and uh, also to this one with the cap and uh, yeah. let's start let's see if it even works because that's a start okay that's a good thing it does seems to work i'm feeding in now uh, 10 megahertz from the maconi which should be exactly the same as I would do from my reference. I will do that also. Uh, the inputs are not 50 ohm but 1 mega ohm. So I'm terminating it here with the 50 ohms. But uh, let's switch over to see. So it's uh, 10, it's a little bit high, 115. So let's see. Yeah, so it's exactly the same. So the, the, the it should be because the Maconi is referenced again to the same. Uh, but I just want to see how high it will go. Uh, if it can reach the 100, I'm feeding in again 50 millivolts as I usually do with my frequency counter tests. I think that's a fair uh, reference. Um, let's go to 50 megahertz. It does that, and yes, the difference, it was 114, so almost five times should be this. It's about right, it's a little bit more, it should be 560, but let's go to 99. It does that and again we have the 114. Okay, so the oscillator is a little bit uh, slow and that's why it has more time so it will count more count so but we need to adjust that. Uh, let's see if we go to a hundred. Yes. It is in overflow, but still it measures. So I wonder if it does 110. We should have a 10 here. One. It does. One twenty. 
I always like to push into the limit just to see because they are usually rated a lot lower than they can actually do so uh, yeah, mo most of the time they do 10-20% extra as you can see it's still counting it's doing uh, 120 maybe 130 even yes it does 140 no, now it starts to miscounts I think no, no, no. so 135 yes it does okay so 135 it still goes but it's uh, made for 100 so uh, let's open up and see what kind of oscillator is inside and uh, we need to clean anyway so it's easier when it's open completely forgot to test what it did on external reference and uh, yeah it, it, it seems because it was a little bit uh, high and now it's a little bit low um, I think the oscillator is also stabilizing and if they use some sort of PLL system that uh, references to the external reference instead of completely using the external reference because I didn't see a switch in the back then it could be because the local oscillator is still stabilizing but you see it's a lot more precise than it was without because if I take it out it, now it says 99999 if I now take it out it will go again to the 114 that he had extra here 11 in a bit so the external reference works as well that is a good start that was actually very easy to open um, there is only one screw in the bottom and you need to unscrew one screw of the handle also the one in the back and then it slides in, in, in two compartments first the bottom then the top and it's actually quite empty <laughs> look at this it is uh, very yeah it looks a lot more in the outside than the inside uh, there is a nice uh, nut, nut filter I like that and yeah the rest is very very empty it looks like there is here an IC missing but I've seen that uh, with more counters and that is an option here is another option probably you can put a I will zoom in later you can put a better oscillator because it's exactly in that area because here it's your external and it just goes in here okay here we have the inside and I do see two adjustment possibilities there is one here and there is one here so I'm not sure if one is the local oscillator and the other one is how the PLL or the external circuit that comes in here will react to this so that I'm not sure I need to read this is probably uh, the better oscillator you can put on top and yeah power supply some adjustments also for the power supply well it all seemed to work fine input circuits some amplification yes and what we have underneath there nothing there can also be put an option below there well I did see on one of the switches they talk about the C channel also that I don't know what it is but I also don't see that module uh, so that is probably that mm. I did find something weird in the here this is an electrolytic and usually they have two legs this one has three and look two here and a one in the back but I already checked that trace if you can probably see in the light like this one is connected to the other maybe if you look like this you see so but I was surprised to sorry I was surprised to see that but it's very simple power supply just uh, 
here, the secondary side, little bridge, two electrolytics, and then here is the regulated stuff. So now I am really like to see if I can take off the front because I really want to solve this this dent here. So first we need to take off the buttons I would think. Okay, I got the last button out, but somehow the part of the button. So I need some kind of pulley to, to carefully pull. But uh, yeah, I need to see how I do it. Okay, I thought I could just take out the front, uh, but you can't. Uh, well, I did partly, but uh, it didn't go very smooth. So then I found out you need to unloose the screws from the cooling, and then you can slide it out forward. And when you do that, you loosen here, there is a nut, and then you can take out the front and it's metal so that's a good thing so we can fix this bend and we can clean so that is super cool and yeah I want to see if I can maybe oh, look slide it out forward and we can also clean and now we can access also the buttons very good Well, I think we did a pretty good job. It's back straight, so that's good. Uh, the pump only seemed to have broken the button and not the pot itself. Because the pot just runs smooth. So that is cool. And aside from that it is still very, very dirty, it seems to work. So in that sense, we are lucky. And well, we're gonna restore this one to its original color. It starts to look a lot better. Uh, we already are at this stage and I think it looks a lot cleaner. And I only use my uh, kitchen clothes. Um, I haven't started cleaning yet with the IPA. But uh, when I start doing that you will really start to see a difference and it, it even becomes a little bit more uh, white. It is a creamy color so it's not gonna get white at all but I think we can do better than this. The housing of this switch here uh, was uh, correct because of the 
hit it got I have now put a little tie wrap around it just to get it keep it closed and it seems that it is exactly doing that so that was the only little fix I needed to do Okay, this is the before and after clean. As you can see, this is all brown and sticky, and this one is like new. Uh, I did it with the uh, IPA. It's a cleaning, uh, cleaning alcohol. Be careful. You need to ventilate your room. I open my window and I use my gloves, but uh, it does work <laughs> pretty well. look at this isn't it smiling at this super super clean the tensile working it is blinking I think it is smiling so there was a lot of work but look at the result I'm really satisfied and uh, yeah we saved it from the dumpster and uh, I like that because uh, a nice piece of equipment like this it, it should be on the shelf somewhere and looking like this. So that's it. Thank you for watching and I hope to see you next time.